we'd all like a magic wand and for the clutter to disappear. But we all know that it takes time. If you're on a mission to declutter but are short on time, this podcast is for you. You're listening to the Declutter Hub podcast, bringing you tried and tested, no-nonsense tips and advice from the leading experts in decluttering and organising your home. Now here are your hosts, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners, I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you're a brand new listener, thanks so much for being here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our weekly podcast. And if you've been listening in for a while, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you and thank you as well, before I forget, Leslie, for everyone who's been leaving us reviews. It's so nice to read feedback about us just chatting away on this podcast. I know, we get our reviews, don't we, on a Monday? So we get... Whoever does our podcasting shows us our reviews on a Monday. And it's always so, so lovely to get them popping into our in-basket. So thank you so much. So we thought we'd record this podcast, didn't we? Because everybody who's here will know that we say that decluttering is a marathon, not a sprint and all of those things. But sometimes you might just have an hour and just want to do something little. And so you might not have the time to go systematically through your whole home, which is the way that we would kind of like it, to be fair. So we thought we would bash out some quick wins for you today and show you a decluttering project that you can do in an hour or less. Yeah, we kind of thought about 10 things. So it's we're, we're back on the 10 things because we love 10 things. But we now thought, let's not just do 10 items, but let's really talk about kind of 10 projects you can do to inspire you to take action. Because you might listen, in, you're normally listening on a Friday when this podcast is brand new. And you might think, huh, I've got a couple of hours this weekend. Why not spend just an hour or so, maybe a little bit less, on something because I want to feel good. I want to get that satisfaction, that good feeling, that buzz that we get when we declutter something and we can actually then find stuff again. Yeah, and of course, it, you know, secretly, actually, we know that if you do these little decluttering projects, sometimes it inspires you to continue. And so we do have that in our arsenal as well, don't we, Ingrid? <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. Now, we want to get started in the room in the home where it's the hub of the home. We spend most of our time there and we, it has to work like clockwork for us. But actually, we just shove things in cupboards and it, we kind of put things away every night. And sometimes it gets a little bit wayward. So we are going to start in in the kitchen on some decluttering projects that you can do little mini decluttering projects that you can do in the kitchen in hopefully fingers crossed an hour or less <laughs> yes fingers crossed i mean we don't know how many you have of everything but we really think this is possible so and i'm going to immediately throw my little list kind of off the rails let's see because i want to start with the cutlery drawer how satisfying would it be if your cutlery drawer was organized and you have just your forks and your knives and your spoons all in one drawer. You have them, you can get them, you can easily set the table or grab stuff when your dinner is ready. So that would be my first one. Do a bit of a, de a cutlery, it's, it's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? A cutlery drawer sort out, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> So quite often when we're doing a cutlery drawer, it's a lot of it stems from organization as well, because most of the time we don't actually declutter a lot from our cutlery drawer because we have what we need. And it's more about cleaning the drawer out, sorting it out, organizing it well, making sure it looks nice and works. Everything is visible. Everything is accessible. But we do want to add a little hint and tip in there, which is think about your current lifestyle. Do you need the amount of cutlery that you've got in your drawer? You know, if you think, well, I do because I kind of need that at like Christmas or when we've got big family celebrations maybe that could be kept off to the side somewhere in kind of a holding area so you don't have to work through 30 forks every time when you're actually um, making lunch or dinner for you and your husband for example so really think that through do you have the right amount of cutlery in your drawer super important isn't it Ingrid 
Yeah, I think so too. And you know, all these rogue things end up in cutler drawers as well. You might suddenly have some, uh, I don't know, some plastic forks in there that you think, how did they end up in here? Or, or maybe some random chopsticks from a takeaway have ended up in your cutler drawer and you're like, oh, they actually should be somewhere else. So it's a nice way to kind of thin it all out a bit, put stuff back in the right place. And it's just so satisfying, isn't it? You know, one of the things that you can take out of your cutlery drawer is medicine spoons and those <laughs> things where you, what are they called? Those a syringe, I think are they called syringes where you dispense medicine to your children. We seem to have, particularly if you've still got kids, I bet people have got like 15 syringes and medicine spoons in there hanging around and we get a new one every time we get some medicine. So that's something that can definitely go. So number one on our list of projects that you can do in, in under an hour is the cutlery drawer. Number two, Ingrid, let's hit them with number two. Yes, it is, of course, one of our favorite things. It's your herbs and spices. Such a lovely little job to do. But if you are somebody who cooks all the time, maybe you've got loads of herbs and spices. And they even might be in different drawers and shelves and cupboards in your kitchen. So if you're like me and you're kind of used to same old, same old herbs and spices all the time, this is probably going to be a quicker uh, job than an hour. You can probably do that a little bit quicker. But if you kind of have a lot of herbs and spices and you kind of want to have a look at the dates, have a look at the contents, does it smell good? Does it still look like something you want to put in your meals when you're cooking? Maybe you need to um, refresh your pepper and salt shaker. I don't know. But all of those little jobs can kind of all come together when you sort out a herbs and spices drawer or cupboard. Yeah. Again, so satisfying a lot, but it's organization as well. So do think as well whether you can containerize those herbs and spices, whether that's going to help you if you've got them on a high shelf. Can they come down a little bit or can they be lifted down, I mean, in um, a container that might make things a little bit easier. Loads and loads of options out there for herbs and spices storage. So do look at what's out there and what might make your life a little bit easier. So number two on the list was herbs and spices. So without further ado, Ingrid, let's go to number Number three we love this one don't we yes yes of course it is plastic containers and we call it Tupperware here in the UK. And it's like one of those things, because when we say Tupperware, we don't mean like only the nice, beautiful, posh brand of Tupperware. Here in the UK, we call everything Tupperware. If it's a plastic takeaway container from a, from a takeaway uh, that you've had, if it's a, a nice, real Tupperware container, basically anything plastic is called Tupperware here. I bet if you worked for Tupperware, you'd be really cross, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Everything, even the really substandard stuff from takeaways and stuff is called Tupperware. It would make you really, it would be very irksome, wouldn't it, I think? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and we have to explain that because every time we talk about Tupperware in the UK, all our UK followers are like, yeah, yeah, fine. Everybody else is like, what? What were they talking about? So we do have to explain <laughs> this quirk of British language where we call everything Tupperware. So yes, Tupperware. It's very wayward. The lids don't match the bottoms. We chuck it in there every time we get a takeaway. And we need to sort it out every now and again. We recently did our Reset Your Home Challenge and we did a Tupperware count and confess, didn't we? And trust me, there was, I think one lady had over 200 Tupperware containers. So <laughs> definitely some decluttering to happen there. But yeah, Tupperware, go through things, match the lids. Again, think about containerization. Would things be easier if they were in a drawer, if they were in a, a box that you could slot into a shelf in your cupboard? These things are all going to make a massive difference when it comes to, let's call it plastic box storage, shall we, Ingrid? You know what? I think it, Tupperware is, is very interesting, Leslie, because... Really? Very interesting? Yeah, be because... Very interesting. Are you sure that there are, there are not more interesting things out there than well... a Tupperware <laughs> container? Because I, I, in, I think there are. I definitely <laughs> think there are. But if you want to think that it's interesting... Because it is such a wonderful win. I think nobody realises... A, how much Tupperware they have. B, where all the lids or the boxes go through and why you can never find matching sets at some point anymore because there's so much of it. 
and also why it starts to live in different kind of cupboards while you started off with just one Tupperware drawer. So that's why I find it interesting. And it's a massive win when you start to pull everything out, start to match things up. And it's very, very satisfying. And you can recycle it. A lot of people would love some plastic containers. So it's very wonderful item to put on a free cycle or a, or a giveaway group because a lot of people use them. And I think a lot of people are surprised how much Tupperware ends up living in freezers and used for stock. And then also then realize they also have another three drawers full of stuff of it. So I, that's why, that's what I mean with interesting. It's such a wonderful thing to do, to get your head around and get stuck in and do it. <laughs> Sorry, still, I think you do seem to have any rational love of Tupperware. That's why I find it so wonderful. Yeah, I know. I know I am weird. I know I'm weird. <laughs> So you mean the decluttering projects of Tupperware yeah. rather than the Tupperware itself. Although Tupperware yeah. is very useful. Very, very useful. I'll give you that. Yeah. But yeah, let's go on to something else that's, that's close to your heart. What's on number four? <laughs> you also love this. I mean, if you said that you love Tupperware, I have no idea what you're going to say about number four. <laughs> Well, yes, of course, my I, I've managed to sneak in one, of course, that I, I really like because it is cleaning products such a great job to do in an hour or less we have loads of cleaning products we end up buying it because we think oh it's two for one oh or it's buy one get one free let's get some more and then we get cupboards full of cleaning products and i don't think we all clean enough to use all this stuff and it's expensive cleaning products are expensive so to have a good handle on what you have where you keep it actually be able to use it and know how many duplicates and things you have because let's be realistic here if you find a you know a bleach or a all-purpose cleaner you're not gonna be throwing that away it, that will stay good for for quite a long time but getting the insight into how many have i got where do i keep this stuff can i easily grab a bottle of something if i want to do some cleaning or when i want to do some cleaning is so satisfying yeah. But it's not, you know, you can't do this in like 10 minutes, you know, because we read everywhere. Oh, just 10 minutes or five minutes and everything will well. No, this takes time. And we have lots and lots of cleaning products in different places in our houses even. Yeah, I mean, if you've got to gather it from all over the house and find it and sort it and find a storage container for it and work out how you're going to organize it and decide what you're going to get rid of and all that kind of stuff, then it might take a little bit longer than an hour, but not too much longer than an hour. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, I just wanted to throw a little emotion. We know we love our emotions here at the Declutter Hub, don't we? One of the reasons why we buy so many cleaning products often, not always, often, is because we feel that if we buy a cleaning product in some way, that magic wand that we talked about at the beginning of the podcast is going to be waved and your house is going to be magically cleaned <laughs> by the product. And so sometimes we have to actually use the products to clean the house and so <laughs> don't you find that? it's kind of like this thing oh, I just need to buy all these you know fantastic newfangled cleaning they're going to change my life and change the way that my home is cleaned so that's why people who struggle with cleaning a little bit and don't absolutely love it in the same way that Ingrid do tend to have more cleaning products than necessary so that's a little emotion so do think about whether that's you and whether that applies to you it's not going to apply to everybody but it may apply to you and just take a little step back from it and think actually I've got enough cleaning products I don't need any more I just need to use it what I've got and then you can start looking at the the new fandangled things that are out there on the market oh yeah Leslie and I would really want to add to that as well that of course if you have a lot of clutter, it is tricky to clean. So if you've been listening to this, this podcast for a while and you're like, oh, slowly but surely decluttering your house, you will see that the cleaning is easier. And then when you get, get your hands on those cleaning products, it starts to become so much easier. Life starts to become so much easier. So I wanted to say that. And also, I think also the cleaning products, the marketing is so good because they're like, just one wipe, use this product. And we're like, ooh, this sounds amazing. This sounds like exactly the thing I need. Well, sometimes a bit of hot soapy water and a microfiber cloth or a, or a cloth of some sort is all you need. And just a bit of elbow grease. Hi, just taking a little break from this week's podcast episode to ask you a question. Are you stressed out by the way clutter makes you feel? 
Are you tired of spending time on decluttering projects rather than enjoying life? Do your continual attempts to get organized leave you feeling deflated, demotivated and exhausted? Come and join our membership at the Declutter Hub to change your clutter mindset for good with our Reset Your Home Roadmap, our live Q&As, our weekly challenges and our private forum. We have everything you need for a fun, focused journey. All the details you need are at members.declutterhub.com. So welcome back. Now, before our little break, we talked a lot about projects that you could do in your kitchen. That's because there's a lot of stuff generally in kitchens. But let's go elsewhere in the house for our project. Maybe we don't want to do kitchens, you know. Maybe we fancy doing something different, something that we've not touched for a while, somewhere in one of those rooms that we've not been in. So let's talk about number five on our list, Ingrid. Yes, it's the stationary drawer, Leslie. How annoying is it if you need a pen, you find one and it doesn't work. You need some, that, that is like, no, I think that's actually one of the most annoying things ever. So you want to go through your stationary drawer and throw away all those non-working pens and the highlighters that have run out and and the 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 erasers that don't erase because they're they're cheap and and the the pencil sharpeners that don't sharpen because they're actually really plastic and not very good quality all of those little bits and bobs that are just cluttering up your desk drawers and your office drawers or are somewhere around the house now is the time to go right i'm going to sort this out now, there are definitely a lot of stationary lovers out there, aren't there? And so everyone's like, a drawer? Are you actually joking? This is like three cupboards worth of stuff, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so maybe if you are a real stationary lover, this might take you a little bit longer than an hour, but hopefully you've just got one or two drawers. It was interesting, actually, when I took my son to uni earlier in the year, I said to him, right, grab some stationery. You know, no, ordinarily when you go to school every year, we have to buy new stuff. You know, it's just like a thing, isn't it, about going back to school where your kids want new stationery for some bizarre reason. And so I'm like, we're not buying new stationery. You don't need that much. Grab from, from your existing stationery supplies what you've got, and you can take that off to uni. And literally what he took with him, you could fit in a pencil case or a pot. And so it just shows you you don't need that much stuff. You really don't need that much stationery to get you through because we're all doing things on computers and iPads and laptops and phones. Everything is digital now, not everything, but many things are digital now. And we need so much less stationery than we used to. But we keep that stationery for years because we think it's going to come in and we find it very difficult to get rid of. So this is the time to throw a little bit of realism in there and think, how long is it going to take me to get through 27 pencil sharpeners and some Tipex from uh, 1987. How long is this going to take? Employ some realism and start to declutter and organize that stationary drawer and make it work for you. Now, of course, very related to stationary are notebooks. Oh, the thought of a fresh new notebook is so appealing. But we know you guys have like 80 or 40. And you need to find out what your favorite notebook is. Now, we've done a whole different podcast, a whole podcast alone about notebooks. But we, of course, are now talking about decluttering projects you can do in under an hour or so. And notebooks is a perfect contender, we think, that fits into this category. Yeah, so you're going to go into one of two categories. You're going to go into the category that can declutter your notebooks in less than an hour. If that's the case, you should be here listening. If you're like, there's no way that I could ever <laughs> declutter my notebooks in over an hour, go and check out the other podcast. Ingrid will pop that link into the show notes for you. And we go into the ins and outs of why notebooks are so difficult for people to declutter. So, um, yeah, so if you're like, mm, no, I was not quite going to cut it pop back to the other podcast and listen in to our advice on that because there's so much emotion and habit that goes along with notebooks. But in general, many people do not have that many notebooks. Look at the kind of notebooks that you've got. Are they fit for purpose? Are they ones that you're ever going to use? Are they too small? Are they fiddly? Are they too big? Are they too heavy? It's time to let them go if that's the case and just have the notebooks around you that you're actually going to use. We all have our favorite notebooks. Check out those notebooks. And that is our number six. I quite like this countdown. I'm like the countdown person. How fun. <laughs> Can I carry on being the countdown person all the way? We should have gone from 10 to 1, no, shouldn't we? Every time we do our 10 things, we go from 1 to 10. We should go 10 to 1 to kind of build momentum and get to that crescendo, <laughs> shouldn't we? <laughs> I don't think time. I don't down, think we write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it matters, Leslie. I think we get there in the end anyway. So <laughs> but if you like to be our countdown person, I'm up up for it. Oh, so good. thank 
Um, well, you announced the next one then. Oh, uh, yes. Now, <laughs> now I need to look at the next one on the list, which is number eight. Seven. <laughs> seven. <laughs> <laughs> seven. seven number seven i knew that i completely knew that well yeah you wrote the you wrote the script for us with all the points you didn't put any numbers on them <laughs> next time we need to put numbers on our one to ten as well that would be helpful wouldn't it <laughs> anyway back to i know seven. tell me off tell me off as per usual <laughs> right so number seven here we go I need to stop being so hilarious and ridiculous and get back to the case in point which is number seven which is our knicker drawer now another weird uk term for you and what i like what are knickers and so knickers are i mean it's really mostly only for women to be fair um men wear other things generally not always but generally but number seven knickers and that is i'm trying to think what they're called elsewhere in the world like pants underpants and um, underwear maybe underpants underwear, yeah. like under underwear that you put like near your bottom <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of the word for it pants let's just call them pants tell us if you're elsewhere in the world and you don't understand the term knickers think about what that is and tell us what that term is yeah tell us yeah a declutter is we should totally know that do you not know either uh i would say probably underwear yeah, but that's bras as well. And we're not talking yeah. about bras. We're just talking about knicker drawers, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> that's our number seven. And we are doing a knicker drawer. Now, it might be that you've got knickers and bras together. So in that case, do the whole thing, do your underwear drawer. But yeah, what we're yeah. saying, you know, they get very wayward. We chuck things in, we take things out, we get too many, we buy new quite often when they start to become yellow or the elastic starts to go. It's time to tackle that knicker drawer. Maybe think about employing some kind of folding or place them nicely. There's nothing quite so satisfying as organising your knicker drawer, but make sure you do some decluttering along the way as well. Yeah. Very important, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think underwear is kind of really a forgotten garment. You know, we spend so much time and money and energy to kind of look good on the outside with like a nice top or a, 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 a jacket or a new purse or some new shoes. And then we've got the most raggedy underwear under it. It's like, OK, maybe I need to invest just a little bit of time and energy in how I look when I've got actually no clothes on because it's just nice to have everything kind of sorted. And when you start to go through underwear, it's like, and then you kind of get a little bit of a giggle, like, I think I've had these pants. Oh, pants. I think I've had these pants for like 17 years. <laughs> I wish that I could still get in pants that I was wearing 17 years ago. I'm not going to lie. There's no, ch no chance of me getting in them. But anyway, sorry, I'm getting all hilarious now. So do think about the types of pants that you, I think it is pants, types of pants that you, <laughs> now that you've said it, I think, yeah, I think it is pants, but I don't know. Um, the type of pants that you wear, because we change style as our body shape changes, as we get older we have different needs and desires for what we want to wear so something that you might have worn in your early 20s who knows what that might have been might not quite cut it when you were in your 50s or 60s <laughs> and so just think that through as well when you are decluttering and organizing your knicker drawer which is number seven on yep. our list right you go and then put the next one in there leslie <laughs> oh because i like it okay number eight on our list counting down to number eight today is pillows and duvets now yep. this might be a bit of a job but what we're trying to say to you is look at those raggedy old pillows that you've got they might even be on the bed and you might have spare pillows in your cupboard and so maybe this is the time to do a pillow or a duvet swap now duvets tend not to be so bad because a lot of duvets now are washable so people are washing them all the time but some pillows, and there are washable pillows out there as well and um, more prevalent than they used to be but quite often pillows are really manky aren't they Ingrid and they do need to be swapped over with regularity when yeah. that's washed or changed no for certain for certain and i think um and just like a little bit of an extra top tip for me here then please buy some pillow protectors when you're doing this job have a look at the pillow protectors have you got them can you buy some they're not super expensive but they will keep your pillows alive much longer you can take the pillow protectors off put those in the wash and your pillows last longer, so you'll save actually more money. So I think that is something definitely have a look at that if you're doing this pillow and duvet situation. And they're so bulky. 
So I think that's really satisfying as well. Can you do this job in a spare bedroom or on the bed somewhere? Can you kind of gather it all together? What sizes have I got? Is this a winter? Is this a summer? Is this a queen, a king, a duvet? What, what, what's going on here? Which duvet or comforter fits on which bed? How many pillows are they? Are they still in good quality? Such a nice job to do. Yeah, definitely. It's a really good idea as well if you're going through this project to do some marking up. And so use a laundry marker and write on these things what size they are. So write on your double duvet, your king size duvet, your queen duvet or comforter. It's called elsewhere in the world as well. And it's got another name, I think, over in Australia and New Zealand, but I can't remember. Um, oh, do you know what I found out yesterday? Just on an aside. Yeah. That in Australia and New Zealand, they call linens Manchester which is really cool because, like, of course, the cotton trade was huge in Manchester back in the, I'm going to, 18 something, something like yeah, that. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not very good at history, by the way, so don't <laughs> come crashing down on me. But they call it Manchester. How cool is that? Yeah. I, I, I read that I, and I thought, oh, that's yeah. very, Leslie's going to yeah. like that. I know, I know. Anyway, that's completely aside. But anyway, and so pillows and duvets, nice little project for you good opportunity for you to get rid of a few bits that are old and raggedy and they're not serving you well and now we are on to number nine ingrid number nine yes it is the coat rack when was the last time you had a little look at your coat rack what coats are on there do they actually all still fit are they the wrong season or have they kind of been in there for such a long time and you can't wear them because they actually should be dry cleaned what's the story there on your coat rack perfect job especially i think when the seasons change so when you go from a warm into a cold period of the year or the other way around that is the perfect opportunity to have a look at that coat rack have you got all the gear have you are there, there sneaky umbrellas in there that are falling apart and all the things are kind of crooked and broken or maybe there's still like a random kids umbrella from when the kids were little and you're like yeah i can't really give them a a little um I don't know, in the night garden or Lego umbrella anymore because they're like 16. It's not going to work. So declutter those items. Yeah. And, you know, and hiding quite often under coat racks and coat hooks. There are, as you say, little umbrellas, little coats, ones that are out. So particularly if you've got kids or had kids and they've sort of grown up, there definitely are some of those things. They hide underneath everything else, don't they? And then so you do have a great opportunity for decluttering. And again, super satisfying when you've sorted it out and you've rehung everything all nicely. And so we get to number 10, Ingrid. Yeah. We get to the final one on our countdown. And yes. so it's an important one though, isn't it? Very, because we're actually telling you now as number 10, go to the donation station, go to the charity shop, go to the thrift shop. You have decluttered items. Now is the time to put it in your car, put it in a bag, put it on your bike, however you travel and bring away this stuff. We don't want it to lurk in cupboards or something that puts be put in a hallway and then you step over for three weeks. Get it out. So I know it's not really an item, but on the other hand, this is like the, the, the master project of projects, isn't it? This is now actually getting all the items out of your house. Yeah, it is. Like, it could be the best decluttering project, the best hour that you ever spend getting all that stuff that you've decluttered, that you've made decisions on, that you've decided you no longer want in your house. But then they sit there, don't they? And that might be in your hallway, in your garage, might even be found their way back into your loft, in a cupboard, might be in the back of your car. Get that stuff to the charity shop, to the thrift shop and get it out of your house. And that is our number 10. That is our final one. Yes. It's the final stage of finishing that project. But we talk about it in the cycle of success, don't we? Finish the project, and that's what this is, bringing the stuff away so other people can enjoy it. And it's no longer in your home. And you start to be able to see some space and get that satisfaction of a job well done. Yes. And there it ends, Ingrid. Yes. And there it ends. So what are we doing next week? I'll, I will tell you, actually, because... I recorded a podcast with Judy, one of our Declutter Hub members, and she tells me all about her decluttering journey and how many um, family heirlooms she found when she actually was uh, sorting out her house. So we have a whole uh, conversation about that. So, and of course, lots more. So that's next week's podcast. 
Oh, I love the member podcast. It's just so mm. nice. You can hear from English and I, of course you can, but it's so important to hear other people's journeys and why they found themselves with clutter and how they went through that journey to have less. It's always so insightful, isn't it? And everyone's got a different story to tell, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And it's such a lovely to spend time with our members as well when we record a podcast as well. So that's like an extra, extra bonus, isn't it, for us, Leslie? Definitely. Well, that's it. So thanks for being here. And we hope you are feeling inspired to uh, do some of these uh, decluttering projects that take less than an hour. Keep us posted. Tell us. Tell us in the comments what you're doing and what your results are. We would love to know that, don't we, Leslie? Definitely. So thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for being here and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much for listening to the Declutter Hub podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to us in your podcast player so you don't miss an episode and we'll see you next week.